this morning. He's the King of Glory, the Lord of Lords. I am Alakashina Kotore. Be at liberty this morning. Just pray the Holy Ghost. God is at work in my life. God is at work in my life. Make that your purpose morning. God is at work in my life. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what they've told you. Make a bold declaration this morning. God is at work in my life. God is at work in my over this situation. He must show to Halibaya. He parka shed the Halikosi. Ranaka to Halipene Kosia. He parka shed the Halibaya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You have gotten to a point uh, where it's like there is no way forward. Uh, it's like you just can't go further. Uh, it's like more of the same. Uh, but the God at work this morning uh, is a God of mercy. Uh, just open your mind and say, Oh God, uh, God at work in my life, uh, have mercy. Uh, God at work in my life, uh, have mercy. Uh, over that child, uh, you, that out of control. Uh, God at work in the life of that child. Uh, oh God, have mercy. Uh, when God gets to walk, uh, he begins to show mercy uh, when God gets that walk, uh, he shows mercy. Uh, oh, God, have mercy! Yamalakosi, uh, Impacatomalakotura, Ekeshe You have been unemployed for so long, uh, it's like nobody is calling you, uh, it's like no phone call, no email. Uh, but this morning, God is at work over that situation. Uh, Father, Abba, Father, have mercy. Ayamalekosi, Shanta Kotori, Epa Shanta Libo, Somalikosi, Rane Kotosi, Asani Mahaneba, Epa Nebayado. God is at work this morning. That medical report, just wave your hand up. That medical report, wave your hand. Say, Abba, Father, have mercy. It will not end the way they said it. My life will not end according to that. Reporter, Abba Father, have mercy. Ya brother Kosia, in Bekotosia, Leka Tumanaka, Yanta Kasura, I declare over your life. Ever place you have suffered rejection because God is at work in your life. This week they will call you the place of rejection. They will call you back this week. I said they will call you back this week in the mighty name of Jesus. For every place you have been mocked. Over your life, it shall become the platform for your celebration. It shall become the platform for your celebration. This week you are entering into her because God is at work in your life. Don't stand that this week. Don't say after me. It shall be back to back congratulations. It shall be back to back congratulations. Oh, it shall be back to back congratulations. Things have been silent in your life for so long. In the name of Jesus. For every silence over your life, I break it by fire. I break it by fire. These joys, the shout of congratulations, it shall be heard in your home. Concerning you, concerning your name, there shall be congratulations. Say, can you turn on this point? Say, God's time God's time I shall be congratulated. God is at work in my life. This week, I shall be congratulated. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to every stubborn door. Every lion standing. Every lion standing at the open door God has given you. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Roar! Roar! Oh, let me your dosha. Every lion standing at your opportunity, at your open door. Say, Lion of the tribe of Judah, roar! The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Therefore, every lion, every adversary standing at the door of my opportunity, Lion of the tribe of Judah, roar! Roar! Over that sickness, Lion of the tribe of Judah, roar! Over that stagnation, for so long, nothing has moved.
moved in your life. Lion of the tribe of Judah, roar over that stronghold, roar over that stagnation. In the mighty name of Jesus, your voice, your voice will be heard. Your name will be mentioned this week. In places where you have no access, your name will be mentioned for good. In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to say, Ekatosinda, Yanakos and Nakosia, Umataribo, Epeketeliba, Heya Goshina, Rakashanda Ruba. Because God is at work. This week is your set time for favor. Ah, so this week is your set time for favor. See the great things the Lord has done for them. Because the Lord is at work in your life. Even the hideous we hear of the strangers God has doing for you. The happiness in your life will not be natural. The happiness in your life will not be ordinary. This will happen and you say, this is God. Enter into the realm of the supernatural. Stretch your hands. You will carry your supernatural manifestation. Because God is at work in your life. No man is at work in your life. God is at work in your life. These hands will carry supernatural manifestation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your season of ordinary things is over. Because God is at work in your life. They got to the Red Sea. And all the water engineers were wondering how this is going to happen. But God, God at work, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God is at work in your life this week. You will see the salvation of the Lord. Over everything that has harassed you up to today, you will see the salvation of the Lord. You will testify in the name of Jesus. While you're still standing, let's turn our Bibles to for Samuel chapter 17. Why they put in that? Look at the person on your left and look at the person on your right. We serve a God who is impartial. We serve a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God who was at, who was at work. When they got to the rest, that same God is still working. His power has not diminished. That God is at work in my life. Look at the person on your left. Say, God is at work in my life. If that neighbor is not serious, look at the person on your right. Say, God is at work in my life. God is at work in this church. Over that medical report that has brought tears and makes you down. I said, God is at work over that situation. And where there was void, where was there was darkness, the Spirit of God began to hover over those darkness, over those void, over those things that were ugly. And the Bible says, Let there be light. Turn as say, Let there be light. God is at work in my life. Let there be light. Over every negativity, God is at work in my life. Let there be light. Let there be light. God is at work in my life. Who has said the thing that it came to pass? When the God at work has not ordained it, every negative prophecy in your life, it goes Every negative prophecy in your life, it goes down by fire. It will not see the light of day. Like a child that did not see the light is aborted. Every negative prophecy, I aborted by fire this morning in the name of Jesus. God is at work in our lives. Oh, my Kataliba. Hashanah Handali Bayadokata. By this time tomorrow. And the man on whom the king leaned, he said, How can this thing happen? He did not know that there's a God who is at work, who will make the Samarians, who will make them flee. Because God is at work in your life. Every place of scarcity, every place of dryness, abundance is visiting you, abundance is locating you. It shall be supernatural abundance because God is at work in your life. The God at work in your life is the God of God by this time tomorrow. It does not matter how long that situation has been. But when the God at work steps in, he said, now all of you analysts step aside. 
All of you, all of you smaller God, step aside. All of you small boys, step aside. It's not time for the men to step in. That is the God that work I bring to you this morning. A recursion and handy by a dossier. He katuma and then a basia do. Oh, Roshende Haliba. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me this morning. Kashanda Haliba Yadosia. When God is at work, things don't remain the same thing. When the Lord turned again our captivity, it does not matter how long it's been. But when God gets to work, the way the Lord turned again our captivity, things that look impossible, things that you can only dream about, God brings it to reality. Because God is at work in your life. Every of your prayers, every of your expectation, carry it as your reality. Carry it as your evidence. Carry it as your testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is not working over your children. The wickedness in high places will not bring them down. You will rise higher than the wickedness in high places. You will go further than they said you will. In the name of Jesus, say, God is not working my life. That God. Oh, Shana Haliba Yada. God asked Joseph, Job, where were you when I created the Leviathan? Who were you? When God gets to work, who is Pharaoh? Who is Pharaoh? Every stronghold of Pharaoh over your life. Anything generational. Cycle of going down, <laughs> a cycle of lack of progress. God is at work. Go down by fire in the name of Jesus. Let's quickly read our Psalm for Samuel chapter 17. As the Holy Spirit leads, we're going to make in a lot of prophecies today because when God is at work, get into the moment. Don't wait. Don't, don't wait. Because he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. And when God is saying, I'll do something at work, he doesn't whisper. He has not said it in a secret place. He didn't say it in a whisper. Oh, let me try and see if it's going to happen. That's not the God at work. God says it. He roars. The lion of the top of it, he rose because he, what he says he will do. That is the God I told you about this morning. Not some fake Jesus that cannot heal. That's why they don't want to, they don't want to tell you God can heal. But in streams of joy, we have a mandate that God is the same yesterday, is the same today, and he will be the same forever till Christ return. And that God is at work. That is the Jesus we talk about. That's our Jesus. The one from the restoration power, he still heals. He still saves. The one who wiped the tears from the eyes of the widow of Nain and said, not today. He said, not today. You have buried too many. You have buried one and you're going to bury another. I pray for you. For somebody here, every arrow of death directed at you. I said, not this year. Not this year, not this year, in the name of Jesus. Every negative target that you are saying, not this year. Every place where you have suffered pain, every place where you have afflicted, I said, never again. God is at work in your life, never again, never again. Cycle of affliction, I tear you down by fire. That cycle you will not go again in the mighty name of Jesus because the God will serve what He cannot do. Does not exist. What that God cannot do does not exist. Oh, I'm a Koshina. Napana Kosiade. I reckon Sita Haliba Yada. Maka Shanda Hudu. Oh, Rama Shanda Haliba Yodo. Oh, Shanda Hila. Oh, God, let us let us read the Bible today. So you can also read the Bible. Uh, can we do that today? All right, uh, for Samuel chapter 16, uh, for chapter 17. Uh, Let's just read from verse 16 uh, to 30. Already, like a, like a mighty army. I mean, really want to go. And the Philistines drew near and presented himself for 40 days, morning and evening. Then Jesus said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and this ten loaves, and run to your brothers at the camp. 
and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousands and see how your brothers are fair and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose in the morning, left the ship with the keeper and took the things and went as Jesse has commanded him. And he came to the camp and the enemy was about going to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array against army, against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name coming up from the armies of the Philistine and he spoke according to the same words so David heard and all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were dreadfully afraid so, has come to defy Israel and it shall be that the man who kills him the king will enrich with great riches will give him his daughter and give him his father's house Exception from taxes in Israel. Then, what shall be done for the man who killed this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this same manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Uh, against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? And David said, What have okay, go ahead. Okay. Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first one did. Now, verse 36. Verse 36. Okay. Your servant has killed both bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing as he has defied the armies of the living God. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Look, I, I flick over somebody today. That situation. Maybe I calibrate it this way. Maybe you have never had a testimony. You say, oh God, this is the third quarter of this year. I have not had a testimony. David had a testimony. He said, right now, this Goliath standing before me shall be in the order of the lion and the bear. May I prophesy to somebody who will say, Lord, nothing has happened this year. Every challenge that is confronting you, it shall go in the order like the testimonies you have heard on NSBPD. I said, that sickness we go as the testimonies you have heard in NSBPD. That stronghold we die like the testimonies you have heard in NSBPD. That situation we dry up like the testimonies you have heard in NSBPD. You are next in line to testify. You are next in line to be celebrated. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask this morning. Let it be all about you and none of any man. Holy Spirit, not only speak freely, move freely in this place. Break situations. Give us evidences. And ask, anoint this lip of clay. That I will not speak in the shape of any human personality. But I will speak only what I hear you say. I'm just a vessel. Anoint me to speak for you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now, there's this verse 1 I still want us to read. But why are you seated? Now, the Bible says that, you know, in verse 1 of that first somewhere, I saw something there. I wanted us to read, but I think I just kind of detracted. So now, the Philistines gathered together, gathered together their armies to battle. And we gathered together at Shoko. Shoko, right? Okay. Which belonged to Judah. And pitched between Shoko and Azekah. 
in Ephes Damin. Look at all the names they were calling. First, there was a place called Shoko. And they were gathered together, which belonged to Judah. So Shoko belongs to Judah. And the pitch between Shoko and Ezekiel in Ephes Damin. Child of God, when they mention these names in the Bible, it's not because the writer is bored. Is bored. It's not because the writer doesn't know what to say. And so in that verse 1, when they mention Shoko, Shoko means fence. Shoko means hedge. And so when the Philistines, when they came, when the army, when they came, they came as a place called fence. So every time the Israelites wants to move forward, there is a fence. Somebody told me, say, no walls. No walls in my life. No obstacle in my life. No walls in my life. When they were going to Jericho, what did they encounter? Walls. I speak to somebody here. And they don't think about walls. When you get to a wall, a wall does not allow you to go forward. A wall makes you stand in one place or makes you go back. And I see people in destiny. They are going to a place and they have gotten to a wall. The friends call Shoko. And wait, they're just supposed to move, but they cannot move. They just get there and they are going back. So it is rising one step forward, two step backward. May I pray for somebody this morning in the name of Jesus. Every wall on your destiny pattern, they go down by fire. Every wall, they go down by fire. Everything called the word of Jericho, they go down by fire in the name of Jesus. It was said concerning the wall of Jericho and the, wall, the city gate was tightly shut. Nobody could go in. Nobody could go out. That was a principality. What an error. You cannot be a child of God. You cannot go by city. Part of the justice again. Shine the light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter. Again, I prophesy every wall on your destiny path, they crumble this morning. God is at work in your life. Every wall, they crumble this morning in the name of Jesus. And they mentioned another thing. It is called Azika. Azika means the place of digging. So before they fought the Israelites, they came and they got dug a place. That reminds me that they were making preparation. They didn't just come to fight. They came prepared. And for somebody here, there is a negative preparation. Can I prophesy over your life? Every negative preparation that wants to cause you pain this week, I say dry up by fire. Scatter. Be destroyed. You will not see the light of day. Every program that has been prepared for you to cause you bitter tears, I say no way. I say no way. Declare the movie of I say every negative preparation to bring me tears. Can you be your own prophet this morning. I said, No way, no way over my children, no way in the name of Jesus. Mothers in the house, just last week, some children went to school and they didn't come back home. Negative preparation, somebody prepared very well and carried gone to death and did his havoc. Can somebody pray this prayer this morning? Every negative preparation over my home, concerning my children, concerning my business, I say fire, fire, fire. No negative preparation from the camp of the enemy. No negative altar prepared against me will break me down. I call down the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Negative preparation. So when they came, they had the place of Zika. So they were digging, they were preparing. But let me tell you, destroy what the enemy is praying for you before it takes shape. Yeah. It's better to destroy it than trying to repair the havoc the enemy has caused. And when they describe that place, for they say Shoko, which belonged to Judah. So they, the enemy is so bold, they came and put a wall in your house. And they didn't stop there. When they got it again, Azika, they began to make all their plans. How oh, we serve a God who frustrates, uh, who makes the diviners mad. Every, every definition, every division prepared over you. I say fire. Fire. I can hear you. Fire. Every enchantment towards you. I say fire. You must be very angry. They got in first, Shoko. And when they got there, they brought all their altars. They began to prepare. And when they looked around them, 
There's a place called Ephes Damen. It means boundary of blood. Ephes Damen means boundary of blood. So when the, so it's a place where blood has been spilled before. So they came to spill blood. But before they came to spill blood, they have spilled blood in that place. Ephes Damen is a place where the Philistines, they died. The Israelites, they died because of previous battle. It's a place of recurring battle. I prophesy over your life. Every back-to-back -back recurring battle, they terminate this morning. God is at work in your life. Every recurring battle, they terminate this morning. There shall be no back-to-back -back affliction. Repeated battles, repeated battles. God is at work in your life. Today, I demolish it in the name of Jesus. So, it's a place of back-to-back -back battle, repeated battle. I, I, sometimes when the battle is going too much, after a while, you will be tired. Because you've been fighting. So it's a place of boundary of blood. So when they come, back to every time, they keep punching, punching. After a while, you become tired. Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. I prophesy no more repeated battle in your life. In the name of Jesus. And when they mentioned the place, after they mentioned Ephesians, they said, which belonged to Judah. So these Philistines, they did not only come in there to repeat what they've done before. They came to cause loss. But this time, they said they have even entered Judah. Back in, like, back in the countries, they have boundary. So they were not in their own place and trying to come into the land of Judah. They were already in Judah. They have invaded Judah. This week said, no invasion in my life. No negative invasion in my life. Ah, no evil will invade my home. No evil will invade my career. No evil will invade my business. Say, no negative invasion. You will not fight with your back against the wall. So before they even started fighting at all, they were already they've already lost ground. You will not lose any ground to the enemy. God is about you. You will not lose territory to the enemy. In the name of Jesus. You will not fight from the place of disadvantage. People fight to take land from each other. But this time, the Israelites were fighting to take their land back. Everything that the enemy has taken from you, I turn it into coals of fire in their hand. I turn it into coals of fire in their hand. Nobody will be able to hold you, handle what God has made for you. The blessing God has, nobody will be able to handle it. In the name of Jesus. And someday, they, and they were gathered in that valley of Ella. And all of a sudden, a man came. When they described this man, ah, forget all basketball players. I can imagine Goliath in basketball field. He doesn't need to dunk. He just holds the ball like this. <laughs> and just be putting it like this. <laughs> that was the size of Goliath. When they described Goliath, they were describing the things they could see with their eyes. At this point, I'm looking at you that at this time that God is at work, there are things that limit supernatural manifestation. When I say God is at work, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not because God, God is not at work. But you say it's not happening to me. And I want to give you some things in a few minutes we have. Things that can limit your supernatural manifestation when God is at work. And so, for the few minutes I have left, they, uh, the man came every day. Uh, in verse uh, in verse 11 the Bible says when all Israel heard this word the Philistines of the Philistines they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Every day for 40 days the man will come you know, you know Goliath has big chest right? He will come give me a man! Give me a man! Morning and evening they were hearing it they keep it and more they were in it. Hey, from the king, the king was just glued to his chair. I don't know the super glue they used those days, but he was glued to his chair. And when they heard it, they not only hear, the Bible says they ran away. In verse 16, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. So every morning and evening when you wake up, a Goliath will show up and say, give me a man! Give me a man! And all the years, they go. 
it was negativity repeating itself for 40 days when you keep hearing negativity back to back a man who doesn't have a word of life in his mouth the default mechanism is to give up man and woman as God is at work in your life and you want to handle your manifestation one of the first things you do this morning child of God is shut your ears from negative repetition tell your neighbor shut your ears from negative repetition shut your ears from negative repetition I refuse to believe any report of the enemy so every day they keep hearing this but you know a man came into the scene and this man's name was David for 40 days this man kept saying the same thing but another man came and spoke a different language what shall be done what shall be given to the man who killed this uncircumcised Philistine a man came to change the atmosphere with his words in an environment of negative repetition speak into that atmosphere nobody said what must be done to the man who killed this Goliath when they heard, they ran. But another man who knows the God at work in his life showed up and said, what are you running for? What must be done to the man who killed this uncircumcised Philistine? When you hear negative repetition, don't keep silent. Speak first. Speak first. Speak first. Because if God, he, Goliath spoke to everybody. But David was the only one that spoke what he would do to Goliath. He said, you, I will bring you down. I will cut your head off. Speak first before the enemy speaks. Because if you allow them to speak and win, the cost of repair, the cost of your comeback will be too much. So David spoke. When you speak, you shift your atmosphere. Don't let the enemy take charge of your atmosphere. I prophesy this morning, every negative atmosphere over your life, I release the fire of God. I release the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Just declares me say, I will speak life. God, I say, I will speak life. I will speak life. No negative word, no negative word of the enemy will prevail over my life. Just open my say, I will speak out your prayer. I will speak life. Every day of my life, I will speak life. No negative word of the enemy will prevail over my life. I will speak life. Speak life into the future of your children. When they tell you what is happening this week, death and life is in the power of the tongue speak life. With the heart we believe, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Say, I will speak life. God is at work in my life. I will speak over my situation. When they bring that immigration letter, say, God is at work in my life. I will speak life. When they bring that medical report, say, God is at work in my life. I will speak life. Speak the word of God. God backs his word. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. God said it. I believe it and that settles it. That is the God that works in my life. His word backs me. When you say GT, why are you so confident? Because I know a God who does not lie. Say heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. So find the word of God and speak it over that situation. And in verse uh, 24, in verse 24, I want you to say something, just we're out of time. In verse 24, hear this. And all the men of Israel First, they were hearing. Now, see something else. Now, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And David said to Saul, Hey, I love this boy. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. Child of God, Saul was speaking for what he saw. 
He was speaking from his experience. But their experience is not your experience. God is at work in my life. So your experience will not be my experience. Where others go down, you will not go down. Because God is at work in your life. So every time they begin to tell you, this is how it happened. Say, my case is different. Because God is at work in my life. Saul, as faithful as he was, he was talking from his own experience. Never allow the CV of the enemy to terrorize you. I told the morning service, there was never a place where they said, devil has power. At that one, they didn't ask they say, beware of the power of the devil. All they simply say is what? Beware of the wiles. Beware of the trick of the enemy. Come on, get that in your head. You don't say the devil. You don't say beware of the power of the devil. In fact, they, they, never, they never called him a lion. They called him a Ryan lion. Because that's the power of the lion, just to roar. So, was speaking for what he saw and was trying to give it to David. But David, or David said, this is what you saw. But I've seen God at work in my life. One day when I was in the field, I was just singing, blah, 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 sheep, have you any wool? And a bear came to take what belongs to me. God at work in my life, I slaughtered the lion. When the bear came, I slaughtered. Even the lion came back a second time. Oh! What happens when the lion comes back the court time? He said, this time, I did not just struck it. I killed it. Because when I was there all by myself, I was not alone. God was not just standing there with me. He was at work in my life. And the same God who was at work, when the bear came to attack my destiny, the same God who was at work, when the lions came to swallow me, that same God is with me. He has not gone on vacation. How many of you know that our God does not play golf? How many of you know that our God does not go on cruise? <laughs> he's 24 7, he's walking. He said he never sleeps nor slumber. That is the God that was. That same God. That same God. Even in this Goliath situation, he says that walk. He will go in the same order. I prophesy to you. You say you have never had testimony for a long time. He said, God, I've just been hearing testimonies in NSPPD. And you're saying, is it true? I prophesy to you, this week you will testify in the order you have heard in NSPPT. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are next in line to testify. That same God, he still has lifting power. We serve a God who lifts the poor from the ground and set them on highs. Because there's a place where governors and priests sit. Not, not a regular place. He takes the poor or the needy from the dunghill, no matter how smelly it is, he takes them and says, right now, governors and princes, make work, make space, because I'm at work right now. Take your place. I pray in the name of Jesus. Take your place. Take your destiny place. Take your destiny place. In the name of Jesus. That is the God at work. So, child of God, never never agree with what you see. You see that before Goliath, David even confronted Goliath, the source of this world, and sometimes they can be in church. After our source said, the Lord be with you. So he could, they can even speak scriptures. But as long as what they're telling you does not agree with what the God at work wants to do, please, turn your back against them. Don't take preaching from them. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ever think or imagine. So, child of God, never agree to what you see. Focus on the power of God. Focus on that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. One more thing, child of God, we just have to hurry up. In verse 36, and David was telling Goliath, uh, so, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and these uncircumcised Philistines shall be as one of them. Seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Hey, who is the armies of the living God? The ones that were shaking like this. The ones who were paralyzed. And saw so too, saw them as paralyzed people. But when a man who knows the God that walks in his life stepped in, he saw differently. Tell somebody, change your perspective. 
Saul never called his army. Armies of the living God. As far as he was concerned, this is the end. But the man who knows the God at work came there. And he said, I know you are shaking right now. But I see something more in you. Tell me, say, there is more in me. There is more than you see. There is more to me than you see. There is more to my glory than you see. There is more to my finances you see. Don't mind right now, I'm still catching balls. There is more to my finances that you see. My glory is coming. Because God is at work in me. He saw what nobody could see. He saw the armies of the living God. David declared their true identity. He said, oh, don't worry. He said, they are afraid. But I see more in them. I see more in your children. I don't mind. That child is getting bad grade, but that child will not end with bad grade. I said, that child will not end with bad grade. That child will not end according to the prophecies of his teachers. That child will not end according to the prophecies of their teachers. He said, there is more in my children. My children, they have signs and wonders. They're not what the school system calls them. They're not what that report calls them. And David saw something and said, I see the armies of the living God. I see people who will break walls. I see people who will put the enemy to flight. I see people who will overthrow kingdoms. I see people who will shut the mouth of lions. That is who I see. There is more to me. So I declare my divine identity. Man and woman who will see, who will experience the supernatural for the God at work. And over any situation, declare your divine identity. Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, he said, Therefore, from now on, from today, April the 2nd, we regard no man according to the flesh. Look at what your life said. Don't look at me according to the flesh. Oh, that was not right. Look at your life. Say, Don't look at me according to the flesh. There is more to me. There is more to you. There's a, there's, a, there's a divine DNA that has been coded in you. I said, from now on, we know no man according to the flesh. Even though Christ was known according to the flesh, yet now we know him no longer because he is resurrected. He is seated at the right hand of God with power, crowned with glory and honor. And he's my brother. He's the first fruit from the dead. So I'm in that order. So declare your sonship. When Goliath show up, declare your sonship. Quick, I want to tell you something. Do you know that when, when he called Goliath, he called him uncircumcised Philistine. And years, years ago, Abraham had an encounter with God. And when God covenanted with him, God said, Abraham, for everything I'm going to do for you, you're going to cut off your foreskin, you're going to circumcise yourself. So David was simply saying, Goliath, you don't have a covenant. Me, I have a covenant. Goliath, David brought in the covenant. You have a covenant of peace in this country. You have a covenant of healing. You carry a covenant of health. You carry a covenant of long life. He said, with long life will I satisfy you? All the days of your life. Just say, I carry a covenant of long life. I carry a covenant of peace. So David brought in the covenant into the situation. And every time they do covenant, they do circumcision. Let's be open standing as we pray. Every time there's a covenant, you do circumcision. And in circumcision, you have to remove something. Are you getting me? God is at work in your life. There are things you must move from your life. Remove relationships that does not honor God. Are you getting me? Remove ungodly lifestyle that does not honor God. Because the God at work, what you want to do in your life, you have to be able to, you have to, be able to fit into it. There are some things that cannot fit into it. Remove unforgiveness. Remove bitterness. Remove envy. I said again, remove uncodliness. So David was saying, I am circumcised. Some things have been removed in my life. So right now, Goliath, I'm ready to see God bring you down. So whatever it is, 
that you know cannot fit into God's plan, what the God at work wants to do. Say, remove it. This morning, those people say, oh God, everything that I need to remove from my life that does not please you, with all eyes closed, oh God, hold to your Holy Spirit, do your work in my life right now. Can you just pray for, do, do your work in my life right now. Mashani kotori baloko sente rebosia okata malakasi ende kotura Holy Spirit, freely do your work in my life. Anything that does not please you, that does not make, that will not make God smile at you. I said, you want, you want Jesus to smile at you. So what has to be removed? Oh Jesus, please remove it from my life. Remove it from my life. You're carrying the weight of unforgiveness. This morning, say, oh God, I forgive. I remove unforgiveness. Every root of bitterness that want to cut you off from grace. Because God is at work in your life. He brings grace. You don't want to fall short of grace. Say, God at work in my life. Every root of bitterness, come out my fire. Can we have the praise team? Marco Shanda Habayadosia de Ekato Mahada Yibayada Sina E Malaka Shondo Harika de Mayade Yado Shokatu Mahade Bayada Hadero Sida Aliado O Shono Holy Bayada Yumashinaya Ekata Mamayadia Eleko Sinada Araba Bashani Madege O Noko Shina Katabaya de Casina Mayadosia Shokoto Baye de Cosia dea Ora manali bana kashike tere bana ashana kato maya do koto koto da aya kasi koto ashana koto mala katia areba shana makato da ashana koto da basiya arama sanda lebo ashana koto da sickness is removed from your body the sickness is removed from your body kapani kosa haya basha dada ba strongholds are broken strongholds are broken the fire of God is over your life. Bashana Katuja. Oh, Shana Robosia. Oh, Hello, people of Houston. Church doesn't just stop on Sunday. We continue over the phone. Make sure that you Google search www.streamsofjoyhouston.org and click on the exclusive messages and features of the website. Fill out the forms for inquiries, listen to recent Pastor G.T. Pender's sermons, and make sure you turn on your notifications to be updated on our weekly content. Let's wake you up with our daily devotionals. Share your daily content posts from our WhatsApp group to all your contacts. Update your status with our motivational videos from our pastors, Jerry Eze and G.T. Pender. Instagram. Yeah, that's the page. Click on it. Don't just scroll through Instagram. Check out our Instagram page at Streams of Joy Houston. Like our amazing reels, posts, and pictures. Share it on your timeline, on your stories, and repost and send us a direct message with your inquiries. Now we're going to Facebook. Yep, yep, yep. That's the page too. Click on that. Don't just scroll through your favorites. Check out our Facebook page and shorts with the name Streams of Joy Houston. Like our amazing reels, posts, and pictures. Share it on your timeline, on your stories, and repost. And send us a direct message with your inquiries. YouTube family! Have you seen our amazing Streams of Joy page on YouTube? Open your Explorer icon on YouTube videos, shorts, and then type the name Streams of Joy Houston. Browse our content, click like, and the share button on the page. First, have you subscribed to our page? Have you? And make sure you turn on the notification button. I officially welcome you to the Streams of Joy Houston family. <laughs>